100 percent Grand Imperial Army. I am closing in on an Emperor caught in all intimate conversation with the General Scarlet. She leaves a flutter as a fair dragon. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I know Scarlet shared something with you, Commander. Something deeply personal. And it's not hard for me to guess what that something was. It gladdens me to see that you have treated her with respect. So very unmanly of you. That's right. A compliment, by the way. Every compliment, uh, compliment comes backhanded from me. Hello. I've noticed a peculiar change in Scarlet, Commander. She seems happier somehow, less prone to take rash decisions in combat. She's almost of value to us. Hmm. Wouldn't that be a treat? Yay. A boat. Wait a little, Sinbad. Even though you fight to obtain peace, strife is inevitable as long as monarchs occupy the throne. Sooner or later, they become dictatorial and go to war on a whim. Our end goal is to make Rismond a republic. But first, we want to see if the majority of all the civilized races truly want peace. Which is why I'm asking for your permission to hold a referendum. Do you want a government that is despotic or democratic in nature? That is the question we shall ask. Uh, why not? All this talk about a republic is criminal, Commander. It would upset the gods' divine order. Deny the little <laughs> Even though we elves do think people are basically equal to one another, we nevertheless have a deep reverence for the age-old noble bloodline from which the greatest of our kin descends without fail. And look at nature. Bees have a queen, do they not? No republic there. And look how far they've gone. I don't think this referendum should be held. No, no. Commander, if you are going to go about asking the common folk for their opinion on matters of state, we'll end up with clowns in the courtroom, candy dispensers instead of taxmen, and the total collapse of a workable government before you can say free gilded carriages for everyone is actually not a very good idea. Rep. Hmm. Imps are notoriously fickle, Commander. We change our mind each time the wind changes direction. No, best to have one leader to decide what's what. We're not doing too bad a job, so why hold a referendum about resignation, eh? So you're the only one actually in favour for this. We are in war times, so I'm not entirely sure a democratic would uh, be in favour for us right now. Hmm. This probably probably would be a reform I tried to pass after we won the war. So right now, I uh, don't know. The people do need to lead in war, I believe. Well, your immediate refusal illustrates quite clearly that you are both afraid of what the majority's answer to our question might be. And that you are quite determined to be a totalitarian ruler once <laughs> the throne is yours. In that case, the peace you may well win is doomed to be short-lived. You have written the future, Commander, and it consists of but... Hey, don't be so sad. You, Commander. People are so easily persuaded, so easily confused. You might well have opted for the vile, godless option that is democracy. <laughs> Seven for bit. Very good, Commander. Let the bees have their queen, the wolves their leader of the pack. We elves, dwarves, lizards, imps, undead and humans will settle for a dragon on the throne. Yeah. Thank you, our commander. Long live the emperor. The benefit is I got a lot of uh, goodwill from that fight. So that's one, nice. I'm not loath to repeat it still. Glad you're sticking with it, commander. I know I wouldn't hold no rotten referenda if I were emperor. Bloody lizard would have lost their head for merely suggesting it. <laughs> Don't worry, Commander. I didn't breathe another word about Scarlet and her. 
ways. It's a relief to know I was right all along, though. <laughs> Your masculinity is so... Oh, praise the Emperor. Not interested in men. Period. When I see your face, it is like a beacon of light, Commander. Such is the relief that I have a person to confide in, that it feels as if I have been pushing a boulder uphill all my life, and that now I can finally let it go. Watch it tumble downhill and out of sight. Glory be to the Emperor, whom I may call my friend. Yay! You are my friend as well, Scarlet. Um, I do have a lot of research points. I should probably waste them on something. It shall Some dragon gone. power I'll never use. Pillow flame sounded nice. Uh, or, uh, I mean, sure. Your general speaks high privilege. Buy that as well. Uh. Yeah, that's nice. I do like passive, so I don't have to bother with them. Eh, yeah, all of that seems nice enough. Don't really care. My dragon's strong enough as it is, I think. Okay. Let's go in for the final push, I guess. You can walk. Oh. I guess I have to go over there. Next time you can walk. So let's just attack with everything we have, I guess. Everything, throw in everything. Oh, this is a good, a pretty good um, chance of winning. All right, I have to buy units. Should probably start to buy it here now. More balloons, always balloons. Let's go for it. Skip. And battle. 73%. I guess I have to fight this to retain my army. I have a lot of cards though. He does have a few troopers, so I guess I could play that card. Jump, go for it. Oh right, I had to grab you. That one I use. And throw in all passives. Uh, it seems about right, I guess. Um, you found me, did you? Anything down here I really need? I guess I could spare one of you. 
guy down there. Okay, we do need to... Holy crap, that's a lot of units there. Okay, we're decent. Wait! You, please stay there so I can occupy you. Are we losing? I just threw everything I had in there. I don't know. Sure, build that. Hmm. Alright, I do need to build that. Let's keep it. Let's try to keep our defenses there. Uh, air factory. And I can do that. Okay, I do need to thin out his troops, I think. Let's destroy you before you can catch... Uh, kill everything! <laughs> as much as possible. Okay, that did a lot of damage, I think. We're in a really good position here. Oh, does apparently you can instantly create those things. Let's just attack. We should be able to. <laughs> Kill everything. Everything. Do they have any more units? Sure. Blow everything up. Whoops. Misclick. It's fine though, I'm sure. Well, we're winning quite handily. Nice. That's the second capital. And no losses. Dragon desperate to remain dictator. Republican Thundran refused. Scarlet, Kitty is a schoolgirl. She and the Emperor spend too much time together, says disapproving Yorick. Okay. Nice things. Well done, Commander. The first of your dastardly siblings has fallen to your might. This victory will send terror leaping down the spines of your remaining opponents. Once more, we set an important step in the direction of victory. Bravo! Yay! Well, goodbye?
Hello, love. Oh, my light and love. All the world is colour. My poor, poor brethren. Alive and death. In death alive. Their plight is black and white. Therefore their souls are too. But I have seen the universe spread its parity like a peacock proudly parading its plumage. Like a poet's words, they wash clean and clear the windows of mind and heart. Behold beyond, new found beauty. Yay. Guess there's nothing new here. Don't think so. Nope. Let's just go to war again. Fave. So basically, I've conquered everything but this last um, area. Huh. I could really fly all that way. That's nice. Mm. The problem is it'll take forever to move all my troops there. Like really forever. Guess I've just better start. And you can go there, I guess. Mm. And that should be it, really. Let's try to build a few transports there. And hey, more balloons. I love balloons. <laughs> right, let's stay in there, see. Okay, that should be it. Time for some R and R, says Emperor. Hello. Cursed be the hot head of a Henry commander. I'd rather swallow needles than endeavor a constructive discussion with him ever again. You know what he's like on the field. Always must he fly solo. Always must he go charging in like a bull in heat. Ridiculous. If he's thinking at all about what he's doing, it's with his brain that dangles, not <laughs> deducts. The man's a menace, a danger to himself and others. Right. Feelings noted. My word. What a wonder it is to experience the boundless tears of taste. <laughs> okay, it's starting to get old, you. Tears of sense. Uh being cherishing every part of being alive every time. How delightfully entertaining to see Catherine and Henry exploding in rage over a strategic disagreement. Like children they are vainly trying to prove to one another they have the better toy. Of course none of the two realizes they could argue till the dwarves grow tired of gold and never reach the tiniest epiphany. <laughs> to wage war requires a distinct brand of genius where they are found wanting. I am found abounding. Sup, Commander? Sup. By all the gods, real or imaginary, devils take my manhood if that Catherine creature isn't a bigger bitch than a mountain sized mastiff. Just kiss already. So what if I wage war by my own rules and care little for her so called team tactics? That's no reason to question my ability. She's lucky she has tits to prove she's not a man, or I'd have beaten her more savagely than a dwarf is anvil. <laughs> Besides, what's the use of standing shoulder to shoulder when you know the fellow next to you will run once the swords start ringing and the blood begins to flow? Aye, that's what happened the day I lost my arm. I stood my ground, alone, and the rest of the Emperor's generals 
They are ran their wives and their litter trying to escape. So much for loyalty. So much for duty. There's only one person you can trust and that's yourself. Looks like we found that out the hard way. I can imagine it's hard to put trust in someone when you've been through such an ordeal. Might we here might not form a band of brothers yet, but we never will unless we give it a chance. I find it a lot Let's go with that. I do want them to work together. Yourself. But if you insist, I'll give the others a chance. Though I'm sure they'll prove to be a bigger disappointment than looking for a brothel in an elf town. Hmm. I really want to finish up the wall. Um, right. Can you board the ships? Mm. Four, five, four, five, four, five. Interesting. Oh, never mind. I probably don't need all of my troops. Probably. Let's load you up as well. I do believe you are cornered, my friend. So have to wait until next turn. Oh, one more bomber. Or nine more. So, I'll buy a transport here. Let's do two, just for the sake of it. And we should be able to cross next turn. Uh, let's finish. Raven, Barter, Tide of General Strunk and Bubble. Hello? Oh my head. Feels like there's an imp wedding celebration going on in there and they've just lighted the fireworks. I drank shots and played poker with Henry, Edmund and Scarlet. Not a dime left in my pocket. <laughs> but it was rather jolly. In a vulgar sort of way. Men will have their simple pleasures, you know. Games of chance, drinking games, etc. All made for a welcome change from Henry's moody ways, though. He was rather cordial, if you can believe it. Thought I'd see Maxos shave his beard first. Hmm. I do bet they will uh, become a couple in the end. Her hating man and he being the typical man's man. It's bound to happen. Tragic news, Commander. A student of wizardry went berserk on campus and slaughtered no less than 22 fellow pupils with a magic-infused sword. Something like this never could have happened if it wasn't so easy to buy such weapons from any Enchanter's Emporium. I therefore propose that no citizen is allowed to buy weaponry unless he or she has been given a permit by the state after a sound background check. I guess this is their version of the gun issue in the United States. As usual, the elves have it all wrong. We don't need less weapons, we need more weapons. If all those dead students had been carrying their own thunder clubs, lightning <laughs> swords or blood rifles, that madman would have been a smoldering heap of fleshy shreds the moment he attacked another. Yep, that's... Oberon One way of looking at right it. Idea. Yes, every dwarf sleeps with an axe under his pillow, but that doesn't mean they should be allowed to parade through the streets with flaming hammers. And I speak from experience. Only took one sneer from a lizard before my brother started swinging the damn thing. And now there's only ashes and ruins where once stood a whole town. 
I fully support Oberon in this matter and would even go a step further. If it were up to the lizard, no citizen would have license to own weapons beyond the scope of a bread knife. Permits, however, are a first step in the right direction and should be ratified. Good thing. What a I do agree. Because one sorcerer's apprentice turned out to be a few bullets short of a six shooter, our children should be denied the gaieties of innocent games like Backyard Cannonade or Hide and Seek the Lit Fuse. No, no, no. A weekly trip to the Enchanted Emporium is every growing imp's pride and joy. Let's uh, design strict laws for weapon possession. Yes. You take a load off my mind, Commander. Imagine the damage that could have been done if that student had bought an imp repeater. One blast can level a class. Nice, nice. Let's uh, go to our queen and see what new wonders oh, she has discovered. All the world is color. <laughs> my poor, poor brethren. Alive and death. And death alive. Their sight is black and white, therefore their souls are too. But I have seen the universe spread its powers like a peacock proudly parading its plumage. Haven't you already said this? I think so. Next time Henry wants to play cards, I'll tell him I'd rather tongue kiss a rattler. Such an unrefined game, really. The pastime of booze hounds and imbeciles. Quite unfit for a man of my refinement. To change the subject entirely, could I receive my wages in person this month? I've had some unexpected expenses. Uh, you're Commander. funny. So I took your counsel to heart and decided I should give my fellow generals a chance to prove they are worthy of my esteemed friendship and perhaps even trust. What better test I can put them to, I ask myself, than the holy game of poker. See who shrews, behold who bluffs, descry who dares, and when. So that's what I did. Rounded them up and played from dusk till dawn. You were right. They're not a bad bunch once you get to know them. Obviously, I left their purses emptier than Yorick's skull, which does do wonders for my temper. Can't rightly say if that endeared me to them, <laughs> but I'm sure as hell I'd like to see more of them once this month's wages come in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's mount the last attack. Our last effort to win this war. Yo. Deploy troops in with the 20 time balloons, that's kind of crazy. Holy crap, I have a big army. Still only 68% chance of winning, so. Let us battle. Uh, I guess, do I really have to battle this myself? Can't really be asked. Edmund, win this for me. Do it now. Skip, what's the outcome? I am fine with those losses. Yay, we made it! Cutscene! Behold how powerful the dragon had become. Many of his rivals had fallen, and victory seemed inevitable. But then Corvus the demon, cruel and cunning as he was, decided to intervene, for he did not want the war to end. He infested all the Empire's enemies using terrible blood magic. Though he remained bound to the Raven, he was now present in all of the Dragon's foes. Enthralled, they became stronger and more vicious than ever. The final battle between Dragon and Demon had begun. Whoa. 